greater joy in life moves to how can I experience more? Not focus on what can I experience less of, but what can I experience more of? So very different paradigm saying, well, I want to get more out of my life. I want to, what can I focus on experiencing more positively? Generally, as you do those kinds of things and go in that direction, the things that were such an overwhelming focus of negative things tend to drop away because you get focused on what's positive in the direction you're moving towards. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so most of the chiropractic profession and chiropractic paradigm has been unfortunately delivered in that restorative model, which is conventionally we're gonna to try to get rid of some kind of spasm, some kind of pain, some kind of limitation of motion, rather than focus on helping the person develop new strategies, new possibilities, and help them in an upward spiral. This has been his incredible gift. So network care, rather than focusing on this is where you are now, we want to eliminate temporarily the major concern until it bothers you again, and then doing that again, and then doing that again, and then doing that again every time. We want to find out how we can get greater depths of change and also advance your progress in your healing. Now each level of care, basic, intermediate, and advanced, for a lot of you that are in care, you're like, we, you hear us say basic care, you hear us say intermediate care, and you're like, what is that intermediate too? Why are these people advanced and on basic? What does that mean? So first of all, it's not really a hierarchy. It kind of sounds that way, but it's it's really a hierarchy. And just because you're in basic care, it doesn't mean you're in some place inferior to someone else or something like that, or more advanced. And it's also not linear in any way, shape, or form. It's very much like this. Okay, however, each level of care has a couple key characteristics that are really important for all of you, which is this. Basic, intermediate, advanced care. Characteristics are, what's the integrity of the person's spine and nerve system? What's the current state of integrity or health of their spine and nerve system? Number two is, what type of forces can we apply to this person's spine? There's a whole spectrum of them. Some things we've taken care of you, and there's types of adjustments we have not gotten the opportunity to do yet, you haven't had the opportunity to receive yet. And then the other thing is, what types of responses does the person have? And we want to see the person's responses move forward or in upwards as their nervous system gets greater levels of self-correction or being able to make change. And network care is the only thing on the planet that does that. The only thing on the planet that does that. Reproducible, um, and you're going to see that. You'll see us work on people and see this person's nervous system do one thing and this person do something that the other person has not achieved yet. Now that means you may be in advanced care and at times need to move back move to basic care because that's what you need at that particular juncture in your life. But you'll see that as we, as we work on people. Now a few things about Donnie. So Donald Epstein, one, you're in for a real treat. And it's a real surprise privilege, amazing thing for him to be here. He has probably spoken in our office two or three times in 16 years. So this is not like a regular occurrence, mm -hmm. okay? Because um, he travels full time. Yes, him and my mom are, are, you know, their home base is Boulder, but they're here about one week out of every eight or something like that, or one week out of every four, because they travel India and Europe and Australia teaching full time. And so audiences all around the world. He's written several books. He has a new book coming out called Pain to Progress um, that's going to be phenomenal. And so without saying anything more, here's Don. Well, uh, actually, I was, we just didn't have to be in town again uh, between flights. I think tomorrow again. Um, and uh, they said, Michelle, do you have any talks going on in the office? She says, yeah, when? Tomorrow. I said, what on? It's the way. I said, I know that. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm, I'm going to show up okay. She said, that's perfectly fine. I want to tell you a little bit of a story. And this was one of the things that really moved me. And you just don't realize at the time, very often, how a small event can make change in trajectory. But actually, the biggest change in our trajectory of our life, the most constructive ways, is when we let down our guard and let in our God, so to speak. Because when we're living a life where we're boxing in with life that we think we know it, 
we're angry at our mother, our father, our children. Right? No, you're angry at the concept of them. Your concept is in the way of knowing them. Your concepts are out on you. What about the disease? Well, once you have a symptom and you name it, you now have a thing. It's no longer an interactive thing with you. Once you have a sense of stability that you think you know, there's no place to go there. There's no place to go. All learning is unlearning. Another thing I want to mention is this, is that all passion, all love, all healing, all greatness, the most extraordinary things in life only happen when you experience a non-ordinary experience. I was recently asked to uh, write an article, and uh, it was a bit of a 48-page article, the Journal of Transpersonal Practice. Now, transpersonal psychology developed as a field of psychology, 1970s to 80s, um, where it was based upon the fact, the concept that most people's psychiatric diseases, from bipolar to schizophrenia to depression, were indeed spiritual awakenings that were that the person didn't have a resource for. Basically, they were looking to experience the world in another way, experience more, experience something, and weren't healthy enough for it, or had no one to help usher them through another level. As a kid of the 60s, it was very common that people wanted to have luchinogens at the time to expand things. Now we're trying to shrink it down because they want certainty as compared to a wild ride. Well, I'll tell you something. The most extraordinary things in life happen with the non-ordinary. Actually, the non-ordinary experience is the basis of everything of value in your life. Just so you know. <coughs> if you go take a look at what the good old days were, the good old days were never when you're reading your goals. The good old days is never when you made the money you wanted to make. The good old days was <laughs> never was never when everything got checked off the list. The good old days never when your life experience matched what you expected. The good old days is when you had no idea how you're going to make the pay the bills, no idea how you can get through this. But somehow with someone else, something else happened. You drew another resource. Uh, then basically your greatest resource is your resourcefulness and you never develop resourcefulness in a full belly. It's just the way it is. So I'm mentioning this because in the article I was asked, uh, they're developing a new area of medicine <coughs> called transpersonal medicine. Now transpersonal psychology says the non-ordinary experience is actually the basis of all healing, of all psychological growth. And they said the reality is every, all of healthcare, all of healthcare comes with abnormal laboratory tests because you're not average. If I'm going to go from here to there, guess what? I can't do it if I'm stable. I have to go into instability to get here and here and here. And real simple, sometimes something's going to look weird. I'll tell you, if it doesn't look weird now, it's not going to be around years from now. This is a time when weird is a new norm. And that's because it's a time of rapidly changing awareness and consciousness happening. So uh, the idea was that all the challenge is all healthcare systems, all of them, are looking to restore a person to a prior minimal state. That's what the purpose of it. That's your healthcare is to restore it to a prior minimal state. And homeostasis, homeo, same stasis, stay the same. And homeostasis really only applies under non-changing environments. And who has a non-changing environment? Do you know if the heart rate and Danny and Michelle measure the heart rate variability here? If this rate space between your heartbeats, the intervals, if it's perfectly regular, you're going to be dead within probably two hours of a heart attack. <laughs> because the heart should be responding to all the mind fluctuations. So what we want to do is, as I'm mentioning this, 